This is the Music History Today podcast for July 4th. Happy Independence Day and happy 4th of July. On today's show, Posh marries Bex. We hail the chief for the first time and for some weird reason, Ariana licks donuts. First up though, on this date in 1828, the United States presidential theme song Hail to the Chief was performed for the first time. It was for President John Quincy Adams. In 1831, the song America, otherwise known as My Country Tis of Thee, and of course, whose music comes from the British national anthem, God Save the King, premiered in Boston. In 1955, Gene Vincent was seriously hurt when his motorcycle was hit by a car in Virginia. In 1959, the Island Records label was founded in Jamaica. In 1966, the Beatles played two shows in the Philippines to a total of 80,000 people. They were then attacked for accidentally insulting Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos's wife, Imelda Marcos. In 1969, Grand Funk Railroad and Janis Joplin were among those who performed on day two of the first Atlanta International Pop Festival. In 1970, 200,000 people saw Jimi Hendrix, B.B. King, among others, perform at the 1970 Atlanta International Pop Festival. In 1974, Barry White married singer Glodine James. Also in 1974, the Tony Orlando and Dawn television show premiered. In 1974 as well, Steely Dan stopped concert performing to focus on making records, much like the Beatles did. They then went back to touring in 1993. In 1976, Paul Revere of Paul Revere and the Raiders got married on stage during his band's concert. The Ramones performed a genre-defining concert at the Roundhouse in Camden, London, England. And also on that same exact day, coincidentally, The Clash played live for the first time. In 1977, Gary Valentine left the group Blondie. He was replaced by Nigel Harrison. In 1980, the Beach Boys performed a free concert in Washington, D.C. In 1982, Ozzy Osbourne married manager and promoter Sharon Arden. Also in 1982, Neil Diamond, Burt Bacharach, and Carol Bayer Sager wrote the song Heartlight based on the movie E.T., which they had all just seen that day. In 1986, Bob Dylan and John Mellencamp were among those who performed at the Farm Aid 2 benefit concert. In 1987, John Fogarty and Neil Diamond were among those who performed at the Vietnam Veterans Benefit Concert. In 1987, Genesis finished their Invisible Touch tour. In 1992, Mamas and the Papas member John Phillips received a liver transplant. In 1993, the Four Tops performed at the Meadowbrook Music Festival in Michigan. In 1995, a whole front woman, Courtney Love, punched Kathleen Hanna of Bikini Kill during a fight backstage at a Lollapalooza concert. In 1997, Roberta Flack performed with the Boston Pops for their 4th of July concert in Boston, Massachusetts. In 1998, Lionel Richie performed at the Party in the Park Prince's Trust charity concert in London, England. In 1999, Victoria Adams, a.k.a. Posh Spice of the Spice Girls, married soccer superstar, or football if you prefer, Mr. David Beckham. In 2002, George Harrison's attacker, Michael Abram, was released from a mental health program only 19 months after he almost killed George Harrison. In 2008, the movie based on the ABBA musical Mamma Mia premiered in Sweden. All four members of ABBA showed up to the premiere, reuniting for the first time since their breakup over 20 years earlier. In 2010, George Michael was involved in an auto accident. He was later arrested and charged with driving under the influence of cannabis, for which he served a month in jail. In 2013, Tina Turner married record executive Erwin Bach. In 2014, Jesse Wood of the group Reef married TV presenter Fern Cotton. Also in 2014, Australian singer Rolf Harris was sentenced to prison for sexually assaulting underage girls. In 2015, Vanessa Williams married her husband, Jim Scripp. 
Also on that same day, Billy Joel married equestrian writer Alexis Roderick, and Ariana Grande had her infamous donut licking incident at a donut shop in California. And in 2020, Kanye West announced that he was running for president. Albums that were released on July 4th include in 1972 when David Ackles released American Gothic. In 1976, Neil Diamond released Beautiful Noise. In 1981, Mission of Burma released Signals, Calls, and Marches. In 1983, Yazoo, or Yaz if you prefer, released You and Me Both. In 1988, Kylie Minogue released Kylie. In 1994, The Prodigy released a classic EDM album, Music for the Jilted Generation. In 1995, Brother Kane released Seeds, The Foo Fighters released their self-titled album, and Funk Dubious released Brothers Doobie. In 1997, Mogwai released 10 Rapid Collected Recordings 1996 to 1997. In 1999, Under Oath released Act of Depression. In 2000, Jimmy Page and the Black Crows released Live at the Greek Excess All Areas. In 2005, Alice Cooper released Dirty Diamonds. In 2006, the Best of the Miami Vice TV soundtrack was released. Also on that same day, Johnny Cash released American Five, A Hundred Highways. In 2011, Blondie released Panic of Girls, and in 2013, Jay-Z released the album Magna Carta Holy Grail, which was given away as a download on the new Samsung smartphone. Singles that were released on July 4th include in 1966 when The Love and Spoonful released Summer in the City. In 1986, Run DMC and Aerosmith released their version of Aerosmith's classic Walk This Way. In 1995, Deep Blue Something released Breakfast at Tiffany's and in 2000, Matchbox 20 released Bent. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on the 4th of July include singer Post Malone, singer John Waite of The Babies, and also Bad English, and also a very successful solo career. Gary Valentine of Blondie, Stephen McNally of B.B. Mac, William Goldsmith of The Foo Fighters, Andrew Cregan of The Bare Naked Ladies, Matt Malley of Counting Crows, Kirk Pengilly of In Excess, Ralph Johnson of Earth, Wind & Fire, Jeremy Spencer of Fleetwood Mac, Alan Wilson of Canned Heat, Dave Roberry of The Animals, singer-songwriter Bill Withers, rapper Fredo Santana, producer Safari Samuels, Clinton Cave of Chase Atlantic, singer Era Estrefi, rapper Kid Trunks, Rapper Foggiano, singer Inara George, music executive Mitch Miller, singer-songwriter Gact, singer Gina Glockson of American Idol fame, Joe DeGeorge of Harry and the Potters, Moa Kikuchi of Baby Metal, and guitarist Baker Knight. Artists who unfortunately passed away on the 4th of July include composer Philippe de Mont, who passed away in 1603 at the age of 82. Composer William Byrd passed away in 1623 at the age of 80. Composer Ambrosius Reiner passed away in 1672 at the age of 67. Songwriter Jean-Joseph Vade passed away in 1757 at the age of 38. Composer and also educator of the Royal Conservatory of Ghent from 1835 to 1851, Martin Joseph Mengel passed away in 1851 at the age of 67. 
Composer Joseph Brackett passed away in 1882 at the age of 85. Composer Auguste Mermet passed away in 1889 at the age of 79. Composer and also teacher at Vassar College from 1867 to 1891, Frederick Ritter passed away in 1891 at the age of 67. Composer Louis Borgo de Cadre passed away in 1910 at the age of 70. Composer Otto Taubman passed away in 1929 at the age of 70. Composer Fritz Reuter passed away in 1963 at the age of 66. Radio and television theme composer and also music director of the Phil Silvers TV show, Hank Silvern passed away in 1964 at the age of 56. Saxophonist Valdemir Eiberg passed away in 1965 at the age of 72. Singer Don McPherson of the group The Main Ingredient passed away from leukemia in 1971 at the age of 29. Cellist Klaus Adams of the Juilliard Quartet passed away in 1983 at the age of 65. Singer-songwriter Jimmy Spheris was hit by a drunk driver while riding his motorcycle in 1984 at the age of 34. Composer and organist Floor Peters passed away in 1986 at the age of 83. Composer Astor Piazzolla passed away in 1992 at the age of 71. Trumpet player Joe Newman of the Count Basie Orchestra passed away in 1992 at the age of 69. Entertainer and socialite, the legendary Miss Ava Gabor passed away in 1995 at the age of 76. Composer and TV series screenwriter Ronnie Graham passed away in 1999 at the age of 79. Singer Ruby Johnson passed away in 1999 at the age of 63. Singer Andre Claval passed away in 2003 at the age of 91. The maestro of love, Mr. Barry White, passed away in 2003 at the age of 58. Conductor Jean-Marie Alberson passed away in 2004 at the age of 84. Jazz saxophonist John Stubblefield of the Mingus Big Band passed away in 2005 at the age of 60. Rocker Barris Akersu passed away in a car accident in 2007 at the age of 28. Singer Bill Pinckney of the group The Drifters passed away in 2007 at the age of 81. Rocker Drake Levin passed away in 2009 at the age of 62. Jazz drummer Jim Chapin passed away in 2009 at the age of 89. Jazz drummer Larence Maribel passed away in 2012 at the age of 83. Opera singer Jeffrey Shovelton passed away in 2016 at the age of 80. Jazz fusion bassist and also photographer Rick Laird passed away in 2021 at the age of 80. And rockabilly guitarist Samford Clark passed away from COVID-19 while undergoing cancer treatment in 2021 at the age of 85. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is July the 5th, when in 1997, the Lilith Fair Music Festival started. 